Get ready for a wild ride, because Starship is about to make history. SpaceX's behemoth rocket is gearing up for its third launch, and this time, it's going for a catch. Welcome back to Starbase, the hub of all things Starship. We're at Orbital Launch Pad A, home to the world's largest rocket and the iconic Mechazilla, the tower responsible for launching, catching, and fueling Starship. SpaceX is making major modifications to this launch infrastructure to support the daring catch attempt. For those new to the Starship game, let me explain. Starship is designed to be reusable, meaning it can return to its launch site after a mission. Unlike Falcon 9, which uses landing legs, Starship relies on Mechazilla's chopsticks, two massive arms that can grab the booster as it descends. The catch attempt is a major milestone for SpaceX. While the launch mount has been tested on four flights, the chopsticks are a whole new game. These arms will be critical for catching the super heavy booster, which will come screaming back to Earth after separating from the upper stage. The booster's descent will generate a sonic boom as it breaks the sound barrier. This will be a unique experience, especially for those who are used to watching Falcon 9 launches online. SpaceX's live streams don't capture the full intensity of the sonic boom, but those living in the Rio Grande area will hear it loud and clear. SpaceX is taking steps to inform the public about the upcoming sonic boom, particularly since the booster's previous landing in the ocean meant the sound was less noticeable. This time, with a return to launch site landing, the sonic boom will be a powerful spectacle. While the focus is on orbital launch pad A, work is also underway at launch pad B. The crane is being reconfigured to handle larger and heavier segments, which will complete the tower and increase its reach for stacking even larger rocket. Meanwhile, Ship 33, the first of SpaceX's next generation Block 2 starships, is undergoing upgrades based on lessons learned from previous test flight. These upgrades are not just incremental, their fundamental changes akin to the difference between iOS 17 and 18. One of the most notable changes is the new stacking and welding process for ship 33. SpaceX is lifting the main section over the new ring segment and attaching the ring before lifting both onto the welding station. This innovative approach streamlines the process, bringing SpaceX closer to its goal of producing a starship every three days. So, buckle up, because the future of space exploration is about to get even more exciting. With Starship on the verge of its first catch attempt, and new upgrades to the launch pad and Starship itself, SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of rocket science and showing us the power of innovation. Starship continues to dominate the space scene with its relentless development, and we're here to bring you all the latest update. First up, closer look at the new Block 2 Common Dome segment. One of the most notable changes is the addition of a methane downcomer pipe connector. Think of it as a straw connecting the upper methane tank to the lower liquid oxygen tank, ensuring a smooth flow of fuel to the Raptor engine. This new structure acts as a funnel, guiding the flow of methane and acting as a reservoir for leftover fuel. The Block 1 domes had a steeper angle, making this funnel redundant. But with the newer, flatter Block 2 domes, SpaceX likely added this feature to ensure efficient fuel flow to the thirsty Raptor engines. Speaking of efficiency, let's shift gears to the heat shield tile replacement. While Ship 30's heat shield is now complete, work is underway on Ship 31. After its six Raptor engines were installed, Ship 31 was rolled to the high bay, where the tile replacement process has begun. Based on the timeline for Ship 30's heat shield swap, which took a little over a month, we expect Ship 31's replacement to be even faster, possibly even finished before the upcoming Flight 5. However, Ship 30's journey hasn't been smooth sailing. Despite a recent static fire, an engine issue resulted in its return to Mega Bay 2 for an engine swap. This emphasizes the importance of static fire testing, which allows SpaceX to identify and address potential issues before launch. Ship 30 is now on its way to Massey's test range for its third and hopefully final static fire, with the goal of ensuring a successful launch for Flight 5, which is still scheduled for late August to early September. We've also got some exciting news coming from Cam Crusher 2.0, updated structural integrity testing rig. It's already crushed its first Block 2 test tank and with the completion of a new segment, the Cam Crusher is ready to crush even more tank. Moving beyond Starbase, SpaceX's global ambition continues to grow. 
A groundbreaking new agreement between Canada and the United States will allow the use of U.S. space launch technology and data for launches from Canadian soil. This opens the door for U.S. rockets, including potentially Starship, to launch from Canada, further solidifying SpaceX's global footprint. And finally, we're taking a look at Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser spacecraft. A unique spacecraft with a fascinating history. In 2014, NASA launched the Commercial Resupply Services Program to seek out new companies to resupply the ISS. While existing contractors like SpaceX and Northrop Grumman were retained, a new company, Sierra Nevada Corporation, was also selected with its Dream Chaser spacecraft. Dream Chaser's story is a testament to the constant evolution of the space industry and the drive to explore new frontiers. Stay tuned as we continue to follow the incredible journey of SpaceX and other companies pushing the boundaries of space exploration. Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser is a unique spacecraft with a fascinating history. It's a space shuttle-inspired space plane and launch vertically atop a rocket and land on a runway like a traditional aircraft. Dream Chaser was initially developed by SpaceDev, a smaller company acquired by Sierra Nevada in 2008. The craft is partially reusable as it jettisons a disposable trunk section before re-entry and landing, making it a more cost-effective option than other non-reusable spacecraft. Dream Chaser can carry around 5,500 kilograms of cargo to the International Space Station, making it a viable competitor to SpaceX's Dragon. Although Dragon can carry a slightly heavier payload, Dream Chaser's estimated launch cost of $40 million, compared to Dragon's $55 million, makes it a more attractive option. Originally slated to launch in 2021, Dream Chaser's maiden flight has been pushed back to later this year, with a potential slip into 2025. However, the first Dream Chaser tenacity is currently undergoing final testing and preparation for its first mission to the ISS. This mission will be an official resupply mission, and Sierra Space plans to recover and reuse tenacity. The launch is now scheduled for Vulcan's third orbital flight, but we'll have to wait a bit longer to see this innovative space plane take flight. But rest assured, Dream Chaser's arrival is just around the corner, and it promises to be a game-changer for the future of space exploration.